thank you for the opportunity to uh, get to talk to you today um, uh, on it. Uh, one of the areas that we've studied a lot is uh, how viruses can be transmitted by uh, objects in your environment too. There are multiple routes which uh, viruses can often be transmitted. Um, what w I want to kind of share what we've learned about this. I think most people don't realize um, how important surfaces are in transmission of diseases. We actually share more common surfaces or what we call fomites, <clears throat> which are objects that can transmit disease with more different people than any time in history before. We spend more time indoors than any generation in history. We have larger stadiums, larger schools, larger universities. And as a result, we share more germs with more people than any time in history. Most people don't realize that we touch so many different sources. We have cell phones, we have computers, we have ATM machines. So you're really actually touching a lot more surfaces than it's actually realized. Uh, and one of the things we want to point out, even though we may be dealing largely with uh, viruses transmitted by the respiratory route, like coronavirus, influenza, another respiratory virus, where the major route of transmission is believed to be large droplets or inhalation of aerosols is all potential, but also uh, inanimate objects or fomites uh, are other routes of transmission. Uh, depends on the environment. Uh, you're touching surfaces and you may become exposed, you have to recognize there's potential multiple routes of transmission, although some may be more important than others. Uh, one of the, the, the routes, of course, is the concern is with hand washing a lot. I think that's already been emphasized. A uh, child touches a germ-laden surface, he gets the- Dr. Gerber, um, forgive uh, me for the interruption. We cannot see your slides. Can you see them now? Yes. Okay. Well, that's it. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm going to show the one on um, is the routes of transmission of diseases that the, uh, both aerosols and inanimate objects or fomites can be transmitted diseases. Basically, you can sneeze, you can get the virus on your hands or it can settle on droplets and then you touch surfaces and then you touch your face. And respiratory uh, virus has been shown to be capable of transmission by touching your uh, nose, mouth, eyes or mouth. Uh, so those are all possibilities of transmission routes. Uh, just to uh, show the next, uh, let me go back here just to re-emphasize, fomites are inanimate objects. Uh, we use that term a lot in, in when we talk about disease transmission by objects all the time. And, and it's a new term that, uh, that I think people should become more familiar with too. Uh, let me go to about why the touching your face is so important in that. And, and really, uh, we have to realize how many times a child actually brings their uh, fingers to their face. Small children, uh, it's more than once a minute. Uh, as children get older, they, they do lace, less face touching. But I think we don't realize how often they touch these surfaces in that and bring uh, potentially uh, pathogenic microorganisms or disease-causing microorganisms to their face. I, I calculated once a child swallows the equivalent of dirt on eight six kitchen floor tiles per day. You don't realize how often that occurs. It also occurs with adults. Uh, about every you touch your face about once every three or four minutes, uh, w whether you recognize it or not. And every time you do that, you have the potential of transmitting or exposing yourself to an organism that was on your hands. Uh, one of the other things I like to differentiate is cleaning versus hygiene. I think people confuse those two. Cleaning really, and we define it as removal of unwanted matter like dirt, where hygiene is reducing your risk or exposure to disease-causing disease organisms. Why is that important? Well, studies have been done uh, by my colleague, Paul Hunter, who did statistical analysis of the impact of cleaning and disease reduction in households and found out actually the amount of illness actually increased in households the more they cleaned because they were moving things around without using disinfectant cleaners. So we've noticed the same thing in outbreaks in cleanups uh, after norovirus in dormitories, for example, in universities, people ended up spreading the virus more to more areas and rooms by not using disinfectant. So it's really important to emphasize cleaning alone doesn't necessarily deal with exposure to pathogens. You really have to use the disinfectant products to keep yourself from moving these around and careful selection of cleaning tools we've seen. 
Uh, the next slide shows some results of some studies where we looked at uh, who's the greatest exposure by pathogens to germs. I'm using the term, this is actually bacteria. And, and teachers uh, win hands down. This is considering phone, desk, and computer mouse on the desk. Uh, tops of, of these different professions. Uh, I'm not encouraging people to become lawyers, by the way. I don't know why they have the cleanest offices, uh, but they want hand down. Usually uh, the phone is the, the germiest object in most offices, uh, followed by the desk and then computer equipment in our studies in that. So you're at greater risk. Why, why does that occur? Well, you probably because of greater exposure to children in a day who tend to have more infections, carry more germs oftentimes in that. Uh, the next slide shows the environments most contaminated with body fluids and why with that emphasis because it's saliva, sweat, mucus generally where you're going to be exposed to a lot of respiratory and other types of infections. And you know, again, on the other list, daycare centers, uh, playgrounds uh, take the top of the list here for where you're going to find these fluids. And that's why cleaning and, and disinfecting these areas become so real, uh, so important. Um, uh, we did a lot of studies on schools looking for viruses and bacteria uh, in grades K through 12 some years ago. Uh, and it was interesting where we found the most uh, uh, bacteria and virus was actually the, the tabletops in hospital, and I'm sorry, in, in school cafeterias. And why? Because your hands are there all the time and I think attention isn't paid, to, paid a lot of time to making sure use of proper disinfectants. Uh, on these tables and that's because that's where your hands are all the time. Then the computer equipment in, in the classrooms and then uh, desktops was also very high, but pretty much these was the ranking where we found the most of the viruses and bacteria in schools. Interestingly enough, one of the cleanest objects we could find was the uh, average of the top of the toilet seat. I know that's hard for people to believe a lot of times, but disinfectants are routinely used in these area on a daily basis. And that probably accounts for this. Also, uh, a lot of people wipe a toilet seat, a public one before they'll sit down, but it's uh, surprisingly enough in most uh, facilities, that's one of the cleanest objects we find. What do we find on school desks is what we focused on in the classroom in our studies. In the most common viruses isolated, uh, were the influenza virus during the flu season, norovirus in the winter time when you have more uh, uh, diarrheal infections, and in parainfluenza, which is similar to the common cold, a little bit worse than the common cold, and that usually occurs in the fall uh, among children in that. But we would find these routinely on desks in schoolrooms, so you do find uh, viruses in these facilities without no doubt. Uh, one of the things to emphasize too is what do you do because, uh, with the exposure to children on these surfaces and basically you have a choice of different types of different infections, certain types of acids, uh, alcohol based disinfectants now are available, bleach and quaternary ammonium compounds being the most common uh, in, in, in general use because their safety uh, considered uh, to both surfaces and handling of them are more traditionally used. Unfortunately, uh, Viruses like coronavirus influenza are very susceptible to quaternary ammonium compounds. Uh, we, we have done studies uh, to look at uh, the impact of using disinfectants in the classroom. We did a study in Seattle some years ago. Where we looked at disinfecting wipes in third and fourth grade classrooms for several semesters. Uh, looking at the absenteeism and it largely related to illness absenteeism. Uh, over this time period. These were quaternary ammonium uh, wipes that we used in this case. Uh, and we had volunteer mothers wipe the desks at the end of the school day every uh, day and we compared them. And actually it resulted in about a 50% re uh, reduction in absenteeism in this study. So apparently enhanced disinfection will reduce the exposure uh, of the risk to children. In the next slide, we repeated this in another study uh, looking at noroviruses, uh, we specifically looked at uh, illness rates of gastroenteritis among children in this study. And we found out the rates of at least uh, gastroenteritis was reduced by 20% in these classrooms. Again, uh, third and fourth grade classrooms. But I show a slide here is we looked at uh, how often we were able to find norovirus, which causes diarrhea. Uh, and, and basically, it was very common on the desks, about 45% of the desks, computer equipment half of the water fountains, 
Uh, but after we did an intervention, we were unable to isolate, again, using disinfectant wipes and hand sanitizers in this case, uh, any of the virus. Only at a water fountain, we did find it occasionally still uh, in, the, in the water fountain. So that, that you will find uh, deaths occurring in the classroom. Uh, one of the things to put in here is well, why not use a green, green product? So I just want to emphasize green clean doesn't mean disinfecting too. Uh, you have to realize that. And the other thing you might you be uh, that you should be taking into consideration in picking disinfectants a lot of there's a lot of and there, and there are more of them now natural products that are put out you have to be make sure that you consider that they could be potential allergens too. one of the reasons you don't see a lot of botanical products in common use in facilities because a lot of them tend to be allergens and so you have to be taken into consideration uh, when you're selecting a disinfectant to use in a facility um, so where are we? I, I try to summarize a lot of things being quick here too, is studies have shown over and over again that hand washing uh, will reduce 30 to 50% of the reduction in illness in, in uh, people. And alcohol gel sanitizers can do the same thing, reducing uh, re uh, reduction in absenteeism in some studies by 30 to 50%. There are also quaternary ammonium hand wipes that could be used too, which will reduce exposure we've seen in our studies. And disinfection of fomite surfaces. In our one study, we saw a 50% reduction in absenteeism. In another study, a 20% reduction in gastroenteritis or diarrhea among children. Uh, the other thing too is to remember too is, is that uh, I think is the importance of clothing or cloth face masks that these need to be washed and they should really be done in hot water and bleach if possible to reduce uh, uh, the occurrence of the viruses in clothing too. Um, Finally, uh, the take home message is, is I want to emphasize cleaning alone can result in the spread of viruses. That's why it's important to use disinfectants in cleaning. Use disinfectants against viruses. All disinfectants have to be approved by the Environmental Protection Agency and are so listed by them as a list of the, the organisms, viruses, bacteria that they do kill. That's regulated. Uh, in the United States, all disinfectant products. You can't be called a disinfectant unless you are capable of killing microorganisms in the United States. And use the proper cleaning tools and contact time recommended for each product. All these uh, disinfecting products have uh, on their label uh, the time that's necessary uh, for them to be on a surface to kill microorganisms. So it's important to read these and that should be emphasized, I, I think, to cleaning and facilities management. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a minute or two, and I want to add a couple questions. Um, would uh, some people are saying that uh, bleach wipes are not available, or they can't use, or quaternary ammonia ones? Would vinegar work? Uh, no, vinegar uh, doesn't uh, really work as a disinfectant, and it's not. Uh, it's not registered by the Environmental Protection Agency. There are some antimicrobial properties of vinegar, uh, but it's it's not a substitute. It won't give you the, the kill that you need or the inactivation, the death of the microorganisms and that. So it, it can't really uh, be used in, in, in place of a disinfectant. Okay. Um, what about benzoconium? Um, benzoconium based? chloride? Yeah. Um, yeah, that is actually a quaternary ammonia compound. Uh, and, and, and it is effective against the uh, coronavirus and other lipid containing virus, but it's important uh, any product uh, that might have benzoconium chloride or have quaternary ammonium compounds, you read the label because there's difference in formulation. So label reading is really important to make sure it's registered to kill coronaviruses or, or, or uh, any pathogen or disease causing organism that might be of interest. Um, our time is just about up, so I, I, there are a lot of other questions about other kinds of products and whether you can use face shields and Lysol and Clorox and whether you can use um, hydrogen peroxide and also issues of asthmogens. But when we get to the panel, uh, we will have an opportunity for people to um, ask more questions of you and I really appreciate the background information that you have provided.